Over the last two years, I've been trying to replicate the stellar movement found in the best platformers. And in a genre defined by how you move, fluid controls can elevate every aspect of design. I want to share my approach to movement, starting with platformer acceleration. A character's run can be broken down into three phases, acceleration, max speed, and deceleration. Together, these core components defend the fundamental feel of your character. Most developers begin with platformers that ignore acceleration. This is amazing for beginners, but in turn, you end up with a character that feels almost robotic to control. We can do better. When working with engine like Unity, often the first solution that comes to mind is to adopt a physics-based approach. However, using forces can feel really awkward and unresponsive. We'll have the fluid movement we're aiming for, but this isn't worth the trade-off in control. The solution I found is to scale the force applied to the player by how close their speed already is to its maximum. This means if the player is already moving fast, we'll only apply a tiny force. On the flip side, if the player goes to turn, we'll apply massive force, ensuring they change direction quickly. So our movement is always snappy and responsive. Responsive. This works the same for deceleration. As a result, we won't even need any additional friction. Okay, we've got a fluid and precise player. Perfect. So let's see what's possible with this alone before expanding our controller even further. I find it great to look at some examples. When designing your movement, studying Celeste can be a great place to start. Its superb balance of tight controls and elegant movement leads to an incredibly versatile player. First though, I want to dive into what each extreme on this scale may look like, starting with Hollow Knight. Oh, and by the way, if you want to play along, go check out the demo link below. Not all platformers revolve around precise platforming, which is why Hollow Knight leans towards a much higher acceleration. Remember when I said many developers just ignore acceleration? Well, interestingly, this is exactly what Hollow Knight does. However, this is fundamental to the game's design. By simplifying their game's movement, Team Cherry allows the player to feel in constant control, even while airborne, vital to the game's brutal boss fights and reaction-based combat. Okay, before we take a look at the next game, let's see what more we can add to our controller. A great place to start is to dampen our acceleration when airborne. This is a major part of why Celeste was so great to play, adding fluidity and contrast to the movement. If we dive into the game's code, we can see acceleration has also decreased after being launched off a platform or performing a super dash. Interestingly, this allows Celeste to play with momentum at the highest skill levels, whilst maintaining the responsive controls core to the game's design. We can continue adding checks for other situations. Maybe you want the pair to feel more responsive with the apex of that jump, or if you've chosen a lower acceleration, you can add a multiplier when turning. Let's take a look at a game like this. In Super Meat Ball, you take a long time to reach max speed. This makes the character feel heavy to control, in addition to encouraging the player to maintain their momentum. As a result, games of this nature can be some of the hardest to design for, being on the border of feeling unresponsive. A lot of games will suffer from this take on movement, yet Super Meat Boy and other games such as M++ highlight how the challenge of momentum can lead to extremely satisfying gameplay. Okay, with our undone, what's next? There's still way more to a great platformer, and we haven't even begun to touch on the most important mechanic. So click here to see part two, where I talk about the secrets to an amazing jump, from how to increase its hang time just like in Celeste or Mario, as well as incorporating wall jumps into our physics-based approach. For now, until the next one.